perfect system is patient focused. It's not built around the caregivers, it's not built around building opportunities, it's not built around revenue streams, it's built around the patient. So the perfect system focuses on the patient. And the perfect system has all of the information about each patient so that knowledgeable caregivers working with the patient can figure out what the optimal care pattern for that patient is. And if you're a healthy person and pre-diabetic, uh, the right plan for you is to avoid diabetes. If you have diabetes and you've got comorbidities, the right plan for you is a plan that links your caregivers and, and manages the complications. And everybody has a different perfect outcome, but everybody should have a care plan. Everyone should have somebody working with them, a care team, a support team, working with them to optimize their care outcomes. Perfect system can do that. An imperfect system, patients stumble into the emergency room, that's unconnected to anything else they do. They, they get care for their asthma in one place, they get care for their kidney failure in another place, completely unrelated care. Uh, imperfect system is built around the individual provider business sites and not around care. Perfect system has a data flow, has information going to the patients, has patients able to make informed choices. So when you've got one hospital that has a death rate for heart disease that's three or four times the next hospital over, patients should know that. There should be an informed set of choices for patients. There's huge differences in oncology outcomes. If you have stage three cancer, your likelihood of living six months is significantly different depending on the oncologist you choose. Nobody knows that. If you have a mammogram read, the accuracy of the mammogram varies significantly based on the reader. Some readers have twice as many mammograms getting to stage three and death as other readers. And nobody knows that. People don't know that. So people assume I have a mammogram and protect it. So the perfect system would keep track of mammogram success rates, cancer survival rates, bone surgery success rates. If you just sort through the process, heart surgery success rates, and make that information part of the data flow the patients can use. So you need the right data, you need the right incentives, you need patient-focused care plans, and you put all that together, combine it with current medical science, and, and there's a great opportunity to do some really wonderful things for people. What we have instead is a siloed system. Now, we at Kaiser Permanente, because we're vertically integrated, can do a lot of this work now, and we are doing it. The rest of the world isn't vertically integrated, so it's harder to do a lot of those pieces. But what the rest of the world can do is virtual integration. If you can't be vertically integrated, you can still create integration links using the computer, care registries, data flows, and create care plans for patients and then provide feedback to that from other sources like the claims processing system. If you go to the doctor and you have a claim filed on your behalf by the doctor, there's the diagnosis, there's the treatment, there's the cost of care, there's the person who did it, the time frames. Most of the information that's, that's in a medical record is in the claim. It's not timely, accuracy level is a little lower, it's not real time, but it's there. And so if you're having asthma attacks, multiple asthma attacks, that will show up in both the electronic medical record and the claims database. And right now, the electronic medical record can use it to make an improvement on care. The claims database is wasted. That data is not being used, and it could be used and should be used. So part of the American healthcare reform agenda should be to create access to that database and require everybody who pays for care in America to use that database and focus on issues like asthma care to make sure that every asthmatic basically ends up with at least a computer tracking their care and some kind of a care plan that will improve the asthma care. It makes huge sense to have as much alignment as you can possibly get between the revenue stream and the care delivery. And, and so we, we need to reward the best providers for being the best providers. Some, some processes are very individual, like knee surgery. Typically involves a knee surgeon and a patient. 
and doesn't involve quite a few other areas, although there are um, therapists involved in the recovery. Other conditions like uh, diabetes take an entire team of caregivers. And so you need a team coordination, a team data flow, a team reward system. And the very best payers ought to reward and partner with teams of caregivers for the chronic conditions and then create a marketplace that rewards the best performance by the individual performers. And if you did both of those things, you would have better knee surgery and better diabetic care. And if, you, if the insurance company stands back from that whole process and isn't part of it relative to the benefit package or data flow, information flow, channeling patients to the best providers, I think that does the patients a disservice because that, that teamwork should be there and that partnership should be there. So the ideal model going forward is a linked model. And also there are quite a few vertically integrated care systems in America that ought to be thinking about stepping up to the plate and taking prepayment, much like Kaiser. And I think as we go forward, depending on health, how health care reform shakes out, that could happen. I think there's an understanding, actually, on the part of President Obama, some of the key Senate leaders, some of the key House leaders, that the care delivery system is not organized optimally right now and that we ought to be working toward a better model. And I think there's an appreciation of team care. I think there's an appreciation of data flows, data sets, data tracking, um, informed patient choice. I mean, I think all of that is, is in the air but it's not sufficiently in the bills. And so we've had discussions, conversations, hearings about those kinds of issues, and then when the bills finally got written, some of those pieces didn't get incorporated. But when, even when Senator Baucus did his hearing the other day for his press conference and he talked about how he would like to see healthcare care organized in the future, one of the things he cited was us, uh, Mayo, Cleveland Clinic, Geisinger, some of the other care systems and, and said it would be good for America to reorganize and to move down those paths. I think, though, that the, the way America can get there is not by trying to reorganize the system from, from that perspective. It's by saying, we need to fix a couple things in this country. We need to have half as many kids with asthma attacks. We need to figure out how do we put all the pieces in place to get there. And if we set a goal like that, diagnose every kid, make sure that every kid has a treatment plan, make sure there's a database, make sure you're tracking what happens to every kid. When you put all of those pieces in place, they lend themselves to a system. And because you can't achieve those things unless you have tools, data, information, somebody accountable. So if we set a few goals for the country and then work backward from the goals to the plan, I think, and take that very seriously and then have reward systems based on achieving those plans, I think what will happen then was well, there would be a natural gravitation of caregivers into more tightly organized and coordinated care teams. But that's not going to happen until there's a reason to do it. The caregivers aren't going to reorganize just for the, the theory of it or, or because somebody gave a nice speech and it sounded good or because Mayo has a great brand or we have a great brand. They, they're going to do it if they're, because doing it makes it more likely that they will cut the number of congestive heart failure attacks in half. And if they do that, if they band together to do that and are rewarded for doing that, that model will work. So I think we've got to get there, goal first, rewards, tools, and then I think there will be an aggregation that will come out of it, but it will be an aggregation that results from the goal, um, not one that creates the outcome. You know, if, you, if you look in any other business, if you look in any, if you go to a factory, there are no factories in the world that will build a tool and throw the tool randomly into the factory and hope that somebody picks it up and, and uses it in some smart way. Every factory says, this is the product we want. We want to produce this hubcap. We want this hubcap to have a 99.9% .9 lack of variability. Okay, to do that, what do the tools have to be? And then they work backward from the hubcap to the toolkit. Healthcare is the only thing that throws a new wrench in 
and says, I hope somebody in there uses it, and somehow in the end the hubcap's better. It doesn't work. So we have to start. We have to start with a hubcap. We have to start with the outcome. We have to cut the number of congestive heart failure patients or the number of asthma attacks, and then build the toolkit from that. And then the benefit package that Blue Cross pays has to reward those outcomes. Because if they ignore the outcomes or do as we do now and actually reward perverse outcomes, care delivery will not change. Healthcare in this country responds very quickly to incentives. So if you created a care environment where the care teams who cut the number of asthma attacks in half win, get more money, get more patients, benefit. If you created a situation where the care teams that have half as many kidney failures win, everybody will gravitate to that model. Healthcare providers are very, very smart. You don't get through medical school or hospital administration school without being very smart. So everybody very carefully studies the compensation system and understands exactly what's rewarded and what's not. And if you try to force people into teams just for the sake of putting them in teams and there's no reward involved and there's no positive outcome, people won't go to teams. But if you create a reward system that rewards the result of teams, then people will figure 50 very creative ways to form the teams. And so it has to be on the results. You've got to build the architecture, as every other market does, on the product that's sold. And think about cell phones. The cell phone market is based on the product that's sold. You could not sell a cell phone today of the kind that we used three, four years ago in the market because that's not what people want to buy today. And so the, the cell phone market is constantly changing, constantly improving because they're rewarded by the change. They're not, they're not changing because they like to the change. They're changing because they're trying to get to that next market share and because there's a win for them by coming up with a better phone, they engineer the better phone. There is no win in healthcare right now for coming up with a better outcome. There is none. There's actually a loss. And so you've got to change that. That has to change. And healthcare people are just as smart as cell phone engineers. So if you change that, then the entire system will follow that. And that's where the change has to happen. And it's got to be in rewarding a different set of outcomes. And then people will organize differently, put toolkits in place to get to those outcomes. Mm -hmm.